Hi, Jerry Jenkins here talking about all things writing. Today I'm covering writing from a third person limited point of view. This perspective is a great way to tell the story and is, in fact, the most common way to do it, but it has both its conventions and its dangers. I'll show you how to avoid those hazards, but first, let's define third person limited point of view. In third person, you refer to your characters by their names or as he, she, and him, her. As I said, today I'll concentrate on what we refer to as a third person limited perspective as opposed to a third person omniscient perspective, which I do not recommend. I will cover the omniscient approach briefly, but first let's explore third person limited. Limited to what, you might ask? Limited to the perspective of only one character at a time, one who serves as your camera, microphone, and mind. The general rule is that you're allowed just one perspective character per scene, but ideally this should be per chapter or even per entire book. Yes, multiple perspective characters are sometimes required, and I have used as many as five for one novel myself, but these should be distinct voices, limited to the person who has the most at stake in a scene, and you must make it crystal clear to the reader when you have switched from one to, to the other. No hopping between the hearts and minds of other characters within the same scene. This way, readers experience your story from the point of view of one character at a time, much as they would if they were being told the story in first person, but instead of your character describing their own actions, you describe them in third person. A common question arises. How do I depict other characters' thoughts and motivations, etc.? You do it from the perspective of your point of view character, your camera and recorder. Here's an example from Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Elizabeth felt herself growing more angry every moment Yet she tried to the utmost to speak with composure when she said, You are mistaken, Mr. Darcy, if you suppose that the mode of your declaration affected me. She saw him start at this, but he said nothing. Now, Elizabeth's feelings and motivations are clear, but so are Mr. Darcy's, rendered from her perspective. Readers can deduce Mr. Darcy's motivations based on Elizabeth's viewpoint. Notice there is no unequivocal statement about what Darcy is thinking because we're in her head, not his. But we still get to know him this way almost as much as when he speaks for himself and tells her clearly what he's thinking. Again, we're getting to know him and see his character arc, but still it's from her perspective and because of what she observes and hears. While the third person limited point of view is by definition limited to one character at a time, as I mentioned, you can switch perspective characters when necessary. Unfortunately, too often, beginning writers switch as a form of cheating. While they should remain limited to their main character, rather than investing the time and effort into revealing other characters through that perspective, they simply switch to the other character. But the new one often doesn't have as much at stake and really should remain revealed only from the perspective of the main character's point of view. So resist the urge to switch perspectives every time you want the reader to understand a new character. Instead, be willing to do the hard work of revealing that character through the limited perspective of your point of view character. When changing to a new point of view character is warranted, such a change must be made crystal clear to the reader, plainly delineated by distinct scene or chapter breaks. Add an extra space between paragraphs, employ a flush left italicized time and location change tag, Begin the text also flush left and fully introduce the new perspective character by name. I did this in Left Behind when I switched from my airline pilot main character's point of view to an important orbital character elsewhere on the plane. I added the extra space and began, meanwhile, in first class, Cameron Buck Williams sat hunched over his laptop. Then for a while, he became the perspective character I limited myself to while still writing in third person. So is there ever a place for writing from a third person omniscient point of view? This is where authors write from an all knowing, all seeing viewpoint limited by nothing. They can jump in and out of the perspectives and minds of any character in any scene. That may sound good, but as popular as this was decades ago, and admittedly many, many of what we now know as literary classics employed this technique, it is now largely frowned upon and considered archaic 
and I don't recommend it. Now, you may be wondering how you can best employ and maintain the correct third person limited point of view. Let's talk more about the rules and parameters of how this perspective works. Common mistakes you'll want to avoid include a major one I've already alluded to, the dreaded and obvious head hopping. You might want to check out a previous video I recorded on writing from the first person point of view, which is one way the head hopping mistake can be avoided. In first person, employing I, me, my construction, you naturally restrict your perspective to the narrator's single point of view. To reiterate, you should envision your perspective character serving as your camera and recorder. As you're allowed just one for each scene and ideally for each story, it should be whoever has the most at stake. That will normally be your main character, though in some bigger sweeping stories, as I've said, you might alternate between a few others. Hopping between different characters' heads or perspectives within the same scene, and I've even seen this done within the same sentence, takes you out of the third person limited point of view and into omniscience, which again is largely frowned upon in today's market, and employing it is an easy way to see your submission fail with agents and publishers. Just as an example, here's what it would have read like if I had not limited myself to a single perspective character, my airline pilot, in the opening scene of Left Behind. Rayford Steele's mind was on a woman he had never touched. His co-pilot wondered what Rayford was thinking. See, in two brief sentences, I've hopped between the perspectives of two people, likely losing much of my readership. They don't know whose story this is. Now, I could speculate from Rayford's perspective what his co-pilot might be thinking, but I can't state it unequivocally. It would have to be rendered something like this. His co-pilot seemed to study Rayford as if he knew what the captain was obsessing about. Okay, another mistake to avoid is changing tenses. This is another rule that applies regardless whether you've chosen to write in past tense, as most novelists do, or in present tense. Whichever you choose, stick with it. Either is acceptable, so do what works best for your story. I'm currently writing novels set in the first century, and I opted to write in present tense to give a two millennia old story a sense of immediacy. I just have to be careful not to occasionally slip into past tense, which would read like this. Nicodemus slips into his office and sits at his desk. He considered his next move. Obviously, remaining consistent would have required me to write, he considers his next move. All right, finally, and this applies regardless whom you choose as your prospective character, be sure to fully develop that character. They should bear a significant character arc from beginning to end. Readers will most often experience your story from the perspective of your lead character, so you had better fully know that character. A complex character worthy of embodying your story's point of view throughout must be credible and believable. Your lead must grow inwardly. To create and write a well-developed character, you must know, or if you're a pantser, writing is a process of discovery by the seat of your pants, learn these things as you go. What does my lead character want or need and why? What or who is keeping them from what they want or need? What inner struggles keep them from achieving their ultimate goal? What will they do to accomplish their goal? What heroic qualities emerge during the finale? Knowing the answers to these questions will help you build a strong main character from the ground up. If you happen to be an outliner and prefer fleshing out your main character before you begin writing, feel free to download my free character arc worksheet that will help walk you through this exercise. The link will be in the description below. A writer asked me how he could better describe his character's legalism and self-righteousness. His original read like this, Mother Clotilda sat at an ornate desk, absentmindedly fingering a string of beads encircling her waist as she leafed through a thick leather-bound Bible. She looked like something unearthed at a dig. Did you catch the point of view violation? Mother Clotilde is the perspective character. She's our camera and recorder. So because she's alone, to whom did she look like anything? Another character might say that or think that about her, but we're not in anyone else's head, we're in hers. Naturally, Mother Clotilde would not see herself. And even if she did, she's not likely to describe herself that way. So the solution? I would recommend adding something from her perspective, like 
Mother Clotilda sat at an ornate desk, absent mindedly fingering a string of beads and circling her waist as she leafed through a thick leather bound Bible. She felt confident she knew the scriptures better than anyone in her charge, and she wasn't afraid to make that clear. Okay, so there's a crash course on writing from a third person limited point of view. If you found this video helpful, like it, comment on it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. If you're looking for more free writing resources, check out my blog at jerryjenkins.com slash blog. And once again, find the link to my free character arc worksheet in the description below. All the best with your writing, and I'll see you next time.